Hi everyone and welcome to part one of Alpine Creek. The reference can be found on my website georgecallgreatart.com under photo references. So today is um, you know pretty traditional foreground, middle ground, background Alpine painting here in Colorado. So uh, today was block in and we figured out where our major shapes were going to be and after that we put in thin paint, and that's what you see here. The darks, the lights, and the mountains, and the stream. And we did that in about 30 minutes. What I did off camera was to um, put the dark in the stream, and a little bit of a lighter gray in the stream here. I think I also put in some snow color. It doesn't look like it. It looks like the regular canvas. but. That's what we did today in our first session. You can follow along step by step. And I introduced a new color today, and you'll see what that's all about. Okay, what else? It's important to continue painting on a regular basis. That's what I provide here. So if you're watching on your screen, give me a, a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you join me soon on your screen. Let's see, what else? Get outside and paint. Plein air. This is what it's all about. And um, paint with other people. Get uh, critiques. And uh, all this will start coming together on um, a successful basis. All right, that's all I have to say. And enough said by me. Let's start to paint. Okay, thanks for coming by. Bye-bye. Welcome. And this is part one of uh, Alpine Creek. I'm George Call in Loveland, Colorado, starting a hopefully three-part series and not four. And uh, we should pretty much get this thing done, I think, in three sessions. All right, I'm painting on a 18 by 18 square. And uh, of course, I'm looking at a rectangle reference, and you can find this reference at georgecallgreatart.com and download it from there. So I have students right now, or a student on Zoom, I have, and I'm recording for Uscreen and YouTube. So uh, if I don't kick the cameras, and uh, we should have a pretty steady start today. So today, uh, part one is block in. I want to start with shapes, and then block in those shapes with a basic color. I'm doing something new today. I'm introducing uh, raw sienna over here, uh, where I normally have um, uh, burnt umber. And um, I usually, I'm going to try this in, see if I can do this in place of, of uh, my yellow ochre. So that's what I'm trying out to, to do here. Um, I think I've got my 10, looks like a 6 or an 8, a yeah, 6 and a 2, probably won't use the 2 today, probably use these two guys right here. Palette knife for mixing, all that kind of stuff. Basic palette, ultra blue, uh, permanent red medium, lemon yellow, Naples, and cold gray, that's a Naples yellow, and uh, raw sienna. So, I also added uh, Viridian, which is, I just can't seem to get that good rich Viridian from these mixtures, so I've added that to the palette. Of course, I have down here uh, Titanium White. Good mixing area. Sorry my palette is so colored and uh, look at rough looking, but basically I have good pure colors right here. I have a few left over from last week. I think I have a uh, a royal blue or king's blue over here, and uh, I just want to uh, not waste something like that. Um, so, what do I mean by shape? So, I want to simplify this in a few basic shapes. And when I look at a reference, and what changes do I need to make? Even when I'm in the field, I say, what needs to be added? What needs to be taken away? And I think I want to increase the size of the mountains. So I'm going to eliminate this big dark tree on the right, 
and I'm going to eliminate some trees here on the left to show more mountains. And that's, I think, the basic structural change I'm going to make. I think I'm going to add one more structural change since I have a square instead of a rectangle. I'll have more foreground here on the bottom and show more um, stream down here. Okay, with that, let's get started. And I want to choose an appropriate tool to draw some lines. So I'm going to use my number six and make a mixing color. So today, I might as well start out with the new stuff. Ultra blue, raw sienna. And I'm going to make some ultra blue and some white. A little bit of gray. Alright, I think that's it for the mixtures for right now. And I'm going to figure out some shapes. So I know that we have some sort of a stream coming down here in the lower quadrant. And that's what I'm working on right now. And this is going to be the stream area. So I added a little bit more on the bottom than what the reference shows. <clears throat> Then I have these big tall trees here, and I have a shape some angles coming down here. And now I'll have trees up in this area, and a dark coming down to certain areas, and then I'll have bank. Also snow. I'm going to switch over from the dark mixture to the light mixture, and figure out some Alpine look here. Oop, I think I'm a little too far over. And it's a nice snow field in here too. So that's my shapes for the uh, hills. I might need to move them over just a little bit, and I will do so right now. So one's like, it's not a perfect V, it's kind of flat down, and then this one's more of an angle off the top of the painting. I don't like to have two shapes the same, and that doesn't look natural. All right, let's go back to the darker mixture. This time let's make more of it. So we're going to ultra blue raw sienna. Makes a beautiful rich green. And I'm going to make more of it. The reason I'm moving to raw sienna away from burnt sienna is I just want to have my paintings warm up a little bit. And those two mixtures are just great. Ultra blue and raw sienna. Okay, so I've got my, oh, it looks like a number 10. I'm loading her up. I'm going to thin down the paint because I have a lot of care. Area to paint, cover up. And I'm going to start getting some ideas of where these darks are going to be. And if you're getting too much canvas showing through like right here, when you apply your 
your darks, just get a little bit more turp in. We're doing thin paint. I think I'll run this right off. And these guys are going to come up here. And I think what I'm doing right now is just trying to figure out where these darks are going to be. On my canvas. I've got some smaller trees here. All right, time to get back and take a look at this thing. I'm going to add more raw sienna to the mixture as I go back. I can add a little bit of that blue too. You can see it's just a little bit lighter because I added raw sienna and the blue I use up here. And let's start working on the background trees. So I see uh, some trees right in here, here. I think I'm going to get some more dark, excuse me, over in the right, lower right, I'm going to get some more darks. Not a whole lot, but some that say, hey, I'm here. And it's not going to cover up all these mountains behind it. So there we go. Now I'm going to go back to the lighter mixture. start putting that in. There's kind of a snow area here. That's what this thing is here on the right or the left side. There's kind of a bank of smaller scrub. And then after that is the background trees and I'm putting them in now. And if, again I'm getting a little dry so I'm at a little bit of turp. And now I'm working on or the background trees. I think there's another snow field um, in the area that is um, in the center. And so I'm going to bring that row of trees in such a way that I have two snow fields. Uh, a and B. This is on the left side. And I think I need to bring my trees up. Yep, it's getting a little dark, so I'm adding a little bit more of raw sienna. Alrighty, we'll take a look at it. Looking pretty good. I think I need some more height in this area. Oh darn it, gets on. Why I said darn it was my, I made it a little too dark. Somehow I got a little bit more ultra blue in that mixture instead of raw sienna. Now I do need some darks, so I'm adding some ultra blue and a little bit of raw sienna, and I'm going back to my darks that go real high on the left. And I think I need some here, and you see how I just dabbed it over that stuff and made this tree more pronounced.
Now I'm kind of stingy over here with my darks on the right and I'm going to add more ultra blue. Sorry for the beeps folks. That was my, I've got my camera plugged in or my phone and that's what the beeps are for. People were sending me text probably. And let me get this a little bit higher. So I'll have this one major, this one a little bit minor. back and taking a look to see if my background trees, which have more Rossi in it and less ultra blue, and see if they're high enough. I think I'm going to add some tall ones right in here. Mine are all a little too pointy and I will get rid of those points somewhere along the line. Now, a lot of you say, well, I see more light in the background trees, and I do too, but I'm going to put the light on top of these darks. This is the, the base color for the trees. So basically what you're looking at, and I want to find out at this time, is are my shapes, this nice dark shape that tells a big part of the story, is it working? And so far, so good. So I'm going to pick this up. There's not much left. I'm going to put it over to the side of my palette and get ready for the next mixture, which is going to be the mountains. <coughs> so the two things we have in the mountain, two main things, is snow and rock. So why don't we use the canvas as the snow for now, and we'll make a gray-blue mixture for the rock. So, true to form, let's get some white and some gray. White, titanium white, and cold gray. This cold gray I get from Rembrandt. Most of my products up here are Rembrandt, except the uh, yellow is a gambling color. I'm going to add some ultra blue to this mixture. Ultra blue. And I'm thoroughly mixing it. Again, we want to think about going in thin. And I have a lot of contamination in my brush from my big number 10 from putting these darks in. And I just so happen to have another number 10 right here. And I'm going to use that. A lot of number 10. You can also use 12s at this stage. Now a lot of you are saying, why did you choose a square instead of a rectangle for this uh, painting? It's because I have this beautiful frame. And I'm going to use that for this painting if it turns out to be nice. All right, gets a little more difficult at this point to got to watch out you don't get contamination in from your dark. So I'm going to come right up, but not touch quite yet. So this is a snow field here in this area, which is the kind of on the right side of the upper part of the painting. And I have some these grays that go clear across here, I think. I'm making them up because I can't see it because the photograph is covered up by trees and I'm 
changing the design slightly. And now I'm going to get bold and get into the sides and crevices of the tree. Oop. I'm doing pretty good. Not too much contamination, but some. And then if it's too difficult, just run it right in there and then wipe the contamination off your brush. It's hard not to contaminate. Now, as I go to the uh, mountains on the upper left, they go back more, so I'm going to add more blue, because blue is the last color in the color spectrum that fades away. And that's why mountains that are far away are blue. So I added more ultra blue to the mixture, and I'm mixing it thoroughly. And I know there's snow fields and so forth in there, but they're so faint, I will catch them later. And I just want to get the basic blue color in there now. And I'll test it now. I'm going to blue it up just a little bit more. I'm adding more ultra blue. Just a touch of ultra blue. Thin the paint. And it's a little too dark. I should lighten it up and add more blue. So I'm adding more white. I don't want this darker than this gray. I want it lighter and bluer. And that's what I'm attempting to do. And let's see if the new mixture is working. Voila. We're getting there. Sorry for the slow process. So, that's why I'm wiping it there a little bit. And here we go. I think we're on target. And you can see there's a value change and a color change here. And that's what I want you to do, is to have a color and value change. And have something that's a little bit more blue and lighter in value. Okay. Scraping off the excess because I have so much paint. I want to keep it thin because I want to work on top of it tomorrow. All right. I'm going to pick up my blue, move it off to the side, and see how we're doing on time. And look at my watch here. All right. So we're about 21 minutes into this. And we need to get in the lower part of the painting now. And I'm cleaning my number 10. And I'm going to switch back to my darker fella. And I dipped it, my number 10, into this dark green we had. And I'm going to follow some darks. I think there's some darks right in here. And follow some along the bank there. I know there's rocks and other things in there, and we will get to that here shortly. But I want to go back, and I think there's some a couple trees right here, and I'm adding some foliage to that. And a little fella right here, I'll put a bend on him. And I added another tree there. And I think some stuff there. <clears throat> I'm going to make a darker mixture of blue, red, viridian, blue. And I added just a touch of burnt sienna to have down on the bottom. And I think we have some dark 
uprights, verticals. And I'll put a few of those in. And worry about what to do with them tomorrow. Now down here on the lower left we have grass, light, and looks like some snow on there too. So I will do that next. All right. So let's go to a lighter mixture. So what I'm going to do next is make a, a light green. So I'm going to use um, lemon yellow and Naples and a little bit of blue. Let's go back to that mixture just one more time. So I use the yellow, the lemon yellow, Naples, and just a little bit of blue. And that three-way deal is going to work out pretty good. I'm going to add on the side just a little bit of raw sienna because I see some warm in there too. And I'm just gently adding that to the mixture. Added some white down here just in case. All right, let's go back to the lighter brush and work this mixture in. Thoroughly getting the brush covered and putting that in. some of that on the bank up in here too. There is a lot of bad neighborhood here, a lot of contamination that I can get into. So I'm trying to go in you know, carefully, but it never happens. You're going to have some contamination, don't worry about it. We can always work that out. The ways I deal with contamination are, of course, trying to be careful, then wiping out the contamination on my brush before I reload, and then just running it in there, <laughs> just <laughs> letting it mold together, and then wiping my brush clean, see? I think if you tried to be too careful, it would be like painting between the lines. And that's the first kind of painting I used to do as a little child. Um, my mom got me coloring books, and I could paint between the lines. And my mom says, that looks pretty good. I remember that. And I enjoyed doing it because of the color and... But now I've tried to be a little bit more loose in my application. I'm going to put some, I'm going to add some bank on the right side, which is not in the reference, but I just did it right there. All right, I have a lot of this spread out on my palette, as you can see from the overhead camera, but as you can see, there's not much really left. 
But what I have, I will put off to the side. Well, I think we are a minute or two away from finishing this for part one block in. Now I know there's all these other areas that are not covered in right now and um, that would be the snow and the stream and the sky but they're all light values and what we did today was to get our darker values in and we need to paint on top of this stuff here uh, tomorrow. So um, what I'm going to do off camera is put in um, a gray blue sky and a warm uh, white for the snow and put some darker color down here probably match what the sky was down down in the lower section of the painting so with that I'm going to bring the YouTube and new screens to an end and uh, Ralph if you want to stay on we can continue our discussions on painting we can move forward. So, uh, thank you so much for coming by today. I'm going to bring this to an end, and we'll see you tomorrow for Balance Day, and we'll be making the darks darker, lighter, and adding color on top of color. All right, that's going to bring us to an end today, and we'll say bye-bye.